<laughs> Hi everyone. Um, I don't know how this video is gonna turn out. I actually have to leave pretty soon right now, but I wanted to share with you my excitement, like my genuine excitement, like not filming this segment after the fact or you know what I mean. Like in a few minutes I'm gonna walk out that door and I'm gonna head to the Yazawa Eye exhibition in Shinjuku and I've had tickets for this uh, event since well actually no, I had planned to go to this event like in, back in April like when I first, first arrived here in Tokyo and then as soon as the tickets went on, on sale I went ahead and bought them because as you may know I am a massive 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 Yazawa Ai fan uh, <laughs> I have probably read all her works Maybe not the more obscure ones, but um, it's definitely been a huge, huge influence on my uh, artistic career. Like, she is huge to me, like, in my life. Like, her work, her art, her storytelling, everything. I know, like, my introduction isn't structured at all. I had it structured in my head and all of a sudden it, everything came out. Like, I'm going to the event. I love Yasawa Ai, I love her work, I've probably read all her work, <laughs> she's influenced the heck out of me. Yeah, um, everything just came out at one, in one go because that's how flipping excited I am to be going there. Shirt Nana is definitely one of my favorites but I think my utmost favorite is Gokinjo Monogatari which was one of her previous works. But yeah, Gokinjo Monogatari is probably the one I've read the most, I think. And I just, I just love it to death. I love the characters and I'm so excited that this exhibition is going to be about her, like all her works. So I'm going to be able to see all the characters that I grew up with and reread like, I don't know if it's in the hundreds, but it's probably close to it in the, like hundreds of times. I'll probably lose my mind. I'll probably, I mean, it's an art exhibition, so I don't think I'll be able to film anything. I'll try to get snippets on the way there or, you know, like something hopefully because i'm going with a friend and i still can't film when there's people around me i'm really struggling to do that uh so i will probably catch you later i'm hoping to get some merch um it's a little bit difficult for me to buy things right now but i mean this is like a one-time thing so i'm hoping i can allow myself to splurge a little bit because they have been promoting the crap out of their merch and on social media <sighs> and boy there are some good ones there are some ones i really want to get my hands on oh my god um anyway yeah um a couple more minutes and i'm gonna have to go oh gosh uh, i hope i get to film something if not i'll meet you back here right after this <laughs> oh my god um Oh my god, seriously, like this is absolutely crazy. Like, you've seen me love Pokemon, but this is a whole other level and this is like the first time I think that something like this has happened and I'm actually in Japan for it. Anyway, I'm gonna go. I, ooh, ooh, I'm gonna go. <laughs>
welcome back except I have probably less than half the level of energy I had in the previous <laughs> introductory clip because right now it's 9 a.m. on a Tuesday it's raining outside does anyone else get really tired when it, it's rainy when it's rainy weather I get super tired when it's rainy so um, yeah forgive these and also yeah because it's raining outside it's obviously super dark so um, top lighting it is which is gonna be very unflattering but hey welcome back it's been a few days like I said it's Tuesday I went to the exhibition on Saturday you could not film inside but you could take non flash photos in some of the areas so I'll try and insert some of them here we arrived well you have like a small time slot um, like 15 minute time slot for you to arrive and you join the queue and I think we arrived like in the middle of our time slot and the queue was gigantic I didn't film it but um, if you see like this little segment right here where the queue line is empty you can see like there is room for quite a lot of people to zigzag around and wait for their turn so there were quite a lot of people mainly girls if there were guys I think it was more like the guy friend or the boyfriend or the husband um, that's like my opinion mostly girls some of them like dressed in like nana type fashion I'm saying nana but like yes I universe type fashion quite trendy and like quite out there colorful cool hairstyles cool outfits it was really fun to see like it was part of the fun it was almost like going to a con but like super small scale so when you go in the exhibition works uh like a corridor you just walk you make your way down and it's been divided into each one of her major works the first one you see is one of her newest works which is uh, her illustrations for a book the first thing you see when you walk in is her newest project then a little bit of like introduction to her various works and then it's divided officially by her major works so you'll see um, not in order I'm not an angel, Tenshi Nanka Janai, Gokinjo no Monogatari, Paradise Kiss, Nana and Last Quarter I think those were like the five major works that were uh, shown there it was so magical to see everything in one go and you could see uh, for me the most interesting part obviously as an artist with a manga or well, European manga background were to see like the original uh, pages with the rough sketches and you could see like where there had been corrections and it, it, it was like the actual well I think the original pages because you could really see like the corrections and where she had to change a frame and like the text was taped on and it was really really cool and interesting to see how like get a glimpse of how things may have worked like obviously I don't know that much about Japanese mangaka manga industry except from um, Bakuman <laughs> I watched the anime of Bakuman like twice because I love seeing that little glimpse obviously it's like fiction but you can kind of get a glimpse into the world of uh, the mangaka manga I keep saying mangaka you get a glimpse into the world of the manga industry so it was really fascinating to see that but obviously also it was awesome to see all like illustrations and color versions and just blown up art from certain pages or like magazine cover look there was so much to see and it was shown in a really fun way I think the downside that would I think the one downside maybe is that there were a lot of people a lot of people taking photos so especially at the start there's a little bit of a bottleneck and you want to see everything but there are so many people and you have to queue and wait I guess it's a usual problem I went down a Saturday so it was kind of expected also it's in Shinjuku but I think all in all the organization was good and everything was really well done uh, from what I understood I think this exhibition was planned pre-covid and then covid happened and then it was uh, rescheduled I'm not sure I don't trust my Japanese that well but all in all it was really really great to be there and experience everything so um, if you are 
a huge fan or just a fan or just interested <laughs> in that kind of thing I do recommend just taking some time and heading to the Takashi Maya mall in Shinjuku uh, I don't know if there are tickets like on the day tickets do your research but I do recommend checking it out and then obviously at the very end of the exhibition you get the merch area which was difficult for me <laughs> to be there because obviously the all the people who were the bottleneck at the beginning all reunite at the end at the store um it was like it was a small area with a lot of merch and a lot of people so uh, it's not like you could really take your time and look at everything which is why I think they released um, images of the merch on social media beforehand uh, it does make sense now because when you're there you're just overwhelmed well I was overwhelmed by the amount of people and the amount of merch in a small space uh, so it is best that if you're planning on buying uh, Yasuo yeah, so I merch take a look on either on the website or on social media first to see what you want to buy because when you're there when you are there it'll just be a little bit like sensory overload for sure and for me it was kind of a um, incentive to not buy too much because it was like I kind of really want to get out of here because there are too many people but I want to buy stuff but also you know it was a lot at the same time so I did buy some things but I don't think I went overboard I mean obviously like I mentioned at the beginning of the video my financial situation is very dire at the moment it's not great but I did want to I did have my eyes on a few things I did have to make some decisions but there I did buy some stuff it's it's right here I'll show you in a minute so I think that was everything for the exhibition portion it was so wild to see that because little segment that might not be interesting to most people but I do want to talk about how much of an influence Yazawa yes, I has been in my own creative path journey career like I started watching the anime on YouTube when it was just like these small like five minute clips like back to back that you had to sneakily find on YouTube back in the day still living at my parents but like how old must I have been? Like 14, 15 years old when I was discovering like hidden anime on YouTube and I found Nana and it was like so like different and special and then obviously like the anime portion stopped and I was like I need the rest so I turned to the manga and the art style just blew me away completely like I had read manga before but for some reason uh, Yazawa Ai's style just completely I don't know I felt something different like I it just blew me away I cannot find the words so uh, read all of her work read all of Nana then went back to find all her other works and yeah just completely became a massive Fan. not just her art but also her, her storytelling style and her storyboarding style I remember in art school where I was studying manga European version of manga um, I loved going back to her stories and like seeing like oh this is how she brings this point across by this juxtaposition <laughs> um, like I don't know the English word of these frames she brings this point across and this must have been planned long in advance and like yeah I definitely studied the craft out of it and I definitely definitely aspire to tell my own stories as well as she does one day I don't know I'm probably never gonna be a mangaka and to be honest I think I'm too old to start any kind of career successfully at this point I don't know but I definitely want to use the inspiration and the influence that she has had over me to like oh create my own little projects uh, for sure anyway like I said this segment doesn't make much sense for a lot of people it's just me sharing my own thoughts and experience with uh, concerning this author and I am curious to know about you guys like what are the the 
like what are the things from your teenage years or your childhood that have really had a lot of influence over what you do to this day or how you think or like you know the really influential works in your own lives for me it's definitely definitely as yeah. so i like i mentioned previously i think at the beginning of the video like my all-time favorite is Gokin Jo Monogatari it's probably the one i read the most um then maybe Tenchi Nanka Janai like I'm not an angel but it's like close contender with Nana I think I like I'm not an angel like a decimal point more is because it has a beginning and an end so there's a f um, sense of satisfaction when you've reread everything you have a beginning and an end and it's just like ah I just read something really nice whereas Nana as most of you probably know it's on hi it's been on hiatus for like probably a decade now we don't know if it's ever going to come back we never we don't know if the story is ever going to be continued i hope i'm st like i'm a full grown adult now and i still need to know what happens uh but yeah for health reasons who knows if the author is ever going to come back to the series I think with the exhibition everyone kind of hoped that it was a sign that she was maybe ready to come back but who knows and then obviously um, Paradise Kiss I used to love 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 much more as a teenager still love it to this day but it's not as high up on the list as the other works I used to love it for the fashion obviously Gokin Jo Monogatari is also mostly about fashion <sighs> all the themes Vivienne Westwood like the punk style from everything from the Yazawa universe is like it speaks to me you know and uh, I keep leaving out last quarter 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 I keep leaving out last quarter uh, I have read it a few times it is a really good story but it doesn't mm, resonate with me as much so that's probably why it's like not least favorite doesn't sound good but it's not at the top like the others are anyway let's get to the part that most of you probably want to see more than listening to me ramble about my uh teenage years and my love for i yes yes and it's to show you the little things that i bought oh my god i actually forgot to mention something about the exhibition itself so after you go to the merch store you get to go to a gacha section to try your luck at um to get a pin like a random pin obviously you have to pay 500 yen for it uh but maybe we can start with that so if i can find it in the bag this is the pin I got and I'm actually super happy because obviously this is from Gokinjo Monogatari, my favorite and it's my all-time favorite couple. It's Mikako and Sitome and they're the cutest. I would have played for more but like 500 yen pin. Yeah, okay, come back. Yeah, if you do go, don't miss out on the gacha section. There are quite a few different pins to get i was really happy to get this one i would have loved to get some more but oh my god god of money shine upon me i really could use your help this is the ticket i have a tendency to keep everything but this is not a very like nice ticket anyway this is one of the pamphlets i actually have a much less creased one that's already on my fridge right now this is the art for the exhibition and I don't think this opens got a little explanation at the back am i the only one who didn't realize right away that this is not nana and then this is nana and akira like from two completely separate works and for some reason i'm not i'm not here for this crossover to be honest i don't i don't know why akira and nana on the bike just confuses me um it's probably just me <laughs> anyway the entrance uh for just the adult ticket is a thousand yen so really really affordable uh probably they banked on making a lot of uh money from the merch which they did like so many items were already sold out so uh yeah that's another thing if you're if you have your eye on something hurry the f up because a lot of like the perfumes were sold out and maybe some of the tote bags i'm not sure um let's start by the one thing that i wanted to get like 
if I had walked out with just that one thing, I would have been happy. And that is the Happy Fairy uh, key ring, key ring, phone ring. Ah! <laughs> I've been really good at not opening things until I film this video, so. Uh, even like the little cardboard with um, with Mikako, it's just so it's so pretty. I can't wait to use this. Another thing I didn't mention is that they give you a sticker when you enter, and it's so pretty. I'm so happy to have this little Midori sticker um, <laughs> with my freak sticker. Uh, like yeah, my I feel like my sticker collection is slowly growing on my computer. Mm, what shall we go to next? I got this cute little washi tape. They had a bunch, it was hard to choose, but I went with this. I went with this uh, Tenshi Nanka Janai little design with Midori and Mamiya, like this little circus clown thing. If anyone on my Patreon team uh, is getting mail from me uh i'll probably include a little bit of uh washi tape japanese stationery is so cute so these days when i have to send <laughs> like actual physical uh letters to my to my patreons like if they have a sticker uh if they're in the sticker tier or something i like to include like little things I'm having a lot of fun with it so feel free to join because now is the time <laughs> Uh, I also bought another Denshi Nanka Janai and it's this little cutest notepad. <laughs> it's this the cutest little notepad. And even like the pages have different little cute designs. This was obviously wrapped but I really wanted to look at the pages inside and it's really cute and there's a little bit of a pseudosaurus and like I said I'm being I feel like I I was reasonable there's just one more thing I got just for the design because this is I think it's a mask case pretty sure because everyone in here is wearing a mask but it has like all but it has all of the Nana characters in one like row, so I really, really wanted to get it. Obviously, you can get a much better look at this on the website or on their social media page. But I hesitated to get this one because it's like I don't need it. But I'm sure I can find a use for it, or even like I just like the design, so I could just like maybe frame it eventually or something. What is he thinking about? Garlic? I think he's thinking about garlic. I don't know! <laughs> but it's really cute. So, like I said, I feel like I was quite reasonable considering the amount of things I really did want to get. There's the pen also. Ta -da -da. But in the end, there were a lot of people. My budget was very restricted. Um, so I just had to make do with how things were at the time. I'm just very glad I got these. I kind of do regret not getting a tote bag, but I feel like even if I would have gotten a tote bag, I would have been like, I can't use it, it's too precious. So like, what's the point of getting a tote bag if you don't use it? <laughs> a lot of people on Instagram were telling me about their excitement for the strawberry glasses or X, Y, and Z. In the end, this is enough for now. Like obviously I wish I would have had unlimited funds and gotten one of each when I went there. There were so many cute stationary things that I wanted to get, like post-its and cards and uh, you know, everything. But at the end of the day, I'm happy with what I got. If you have been on their social media page or on their website store thing, tell me what you would have gotten. I think you can get something shipped overseas if you go via itaikuji it's not sponsored but i have a feeling that i've seen some nana merch go through itaikuji so you could be able to ship overseas i don't know where overseas exactly but if you're desperate maybe that's one of the solutions you can use <sighs> right so this was a little bit of a chatty video but i hope you enjoyed it nonetheless it was a really really exciting moment for me and I'm glad it finally happened because it's been months 
and the waiting and the making like patiently watching the things appear on their instagram page and being like oh my god <laughs> so yeah it's done it's over <laughs> so yeah let me know your thoughts in the comments i'm always super excited to know things about you who's watching like your preferences what you would have done what you want to see next from me etc etc if you want to support this channel please take a look at my patreon page i'm in the process of changing things up on there but it's taking some time but in the meantime feel free to join to support the channel to make more of these experiences possible for me to film and show you guys and also to help me stay in japan for as long as i can so thank you for watching don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you very soon in the next one. Alrighty, y'all. Bye!